Hello and good afternoon and welcome to this media roundtable on the current state National Guard hurricane preparation and response efforts. I am Christina Mundy, a member of the National Guard Bureau Public Affairs media team, and I will be moderating today's discussion. I would like to start with having the panel members take a moment to introduce themselves. General Burkett, we will start with you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Wynn Burkett, Major General Wynn Burkett. I am the Director of Operations and Sustainment for the National Guard Bureau. In this role, in a response, uh, my office does not direct the response, but rather we assist the states uh, to identify capabilities that they may um, need, and we will help that coordination from other states. We will continue to monitor uh, the progress of the response and try to anticipate uh, future requirements. Uh, while keeping national leadership uh, informed of National Guard activities. And uh, Colonel Heidelberg, I'm sorry, I'll transition oh. to you, please. Hey. Thank you, Major General Burkett. Good afternoon, I'm uh, Colonel Heidelberg, the Director of uh, Joint Military Operations for the State of Florida. So. It's a unique thing, but for National Guard, we coordinate all civil support to our local authorities across the state. So whenever there's a natural disaster or a man-made disaster, it's my job to coordinate the National Guard's response in coordination with the governor and director of emergency management across the state. And then, as the general said, communicate with not only NGB, but NORTHCOM and other civil authorities that might be supporting us during that event. Thank you. And, and Colonel Rosales, would you uh, please introduce yourself? Hi, good afternoon. This is Lieutenant Colonel Javier Rosales. I am actually the uh, the current Ops Division Chief, and I actually work for Major General Burkett. So our role is to really be the connecting tissue with all the states that require some assistance. You can think of us as a coordinator when states require something, and we can help find it throughout the 54 states and territories. Thank you. Thank you all for your introductions. What we are here to do today is to discuss the State National Guard preparation and response efforts of Hurricane Milton and the response and recovery efforts of Hurricane Helene. And we appreciate if you would focus your questions accordingly. Major General Burkett and Colonel Heidelberg will start with an opening statement and then we will open up the room for questions. And to ensure that we allow for everyone to participate, please ask one question and a follow-up if you would like to have a follow-up. And if there's time at the end, we can open it up again for questions. And a reminder to keep your mics on mute and when you're when you're not speaking. I do have a list of the participating media and I will call on you by name. And with that, General Burkett, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, ma'am. And thank all of you for joining today. It's really a privilege for me uh, to join my colleagues uh, to talk about the response, um, not just in Florida, uh, in the affected states of Helene, but uh, the response um, of, of more than 20 different states that have uh, provided resources, um, and in many cases to both Helene uh, and to Florida. I've, I've witnessed some incredible coordination and uh, really some Herculean efforts um, across the, the National Guard uh, team. And so really, really happy to uh, answer your questions and talk about our response. And with that, I'll turn it over to Colonel Heidelberg. Thank you, General, and thank you. It is an honor and a privilege to be here and to be amongst uh, so many professionals. Uh, you know, first and foremost, I'd like to give my heartfelt condolences to all those across the Southeast that were impacted by these, these horrific storms, you know, especially in the, the West Coast and East Coast of Florida. And really, on the General's note, I'd like to say a, a special thank you, not only to our Guardsmen, but all the states that have really answered the call and come down to Florida, rushed really down to Florida, as he said, over 20 states that have come down to help us in this mutual aid kind of support package that we've got to really be a force multiplier to ensure the citizens of Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, and the other states were not only taken care of, but protected. So uh, without their help, we couldn't do it and we couldn't be um, you know, able to respond as well as we can. And then lastly, just kind of like to focus I think we take it for granted, but the citizen soldiers and the citizens airmen that we have that support this, they make a lot of sacrifices. If you look at Florida, we've had three storms recently uh, and it's just taken its toll. Uh, but the assistance from the other states, the assistance from the other civil authorities, 
and Title 10 being waiting right there on the wind to come in if we need them has all made a difference and allowed us to respond and hopefully keep up this standard. So thank you and I'm, I'm honored to be here. Thank you, gentlemen. And for any media that would like to know more about our panelists, we will drop the bios of the members in the chat right now. So thank you and welcome again. We're going to go ahead and open up the floor for questions. And so please, if we can, again, one initial question, and then if you would like one follow-up, and then we'll circle back. So let's get started. Um, we'll start with Lita from Associated Press. Hi, thanks so much to all of you for doing this. I was wondering if you could just give us all sort of a wrap up, how many uh, National Guard have responded uh, and were requested in um, both North Carolina and in Florida, how many are there and how many active duty are in each. And then uh, as my follow-up, I'll just ask it now, follow-up would be at this point, do any of you, um, and, uh, particularly uh, General Burkett, do any of you have any requests pending or anticipated requests for additional military aid, including active duty in your states? Thank you. Yeah, uh, Lita, thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll begin with uh, the response to Hurricane um, Helene. Uh, so at one point, um, we had uh, well over uh, 6,000 National Guard from those states uh, that were impacted. Um, Florida, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, West Virginia. Um, and then we had states, uh, 13 different states uh, provided uh, forces in response um, that uh, elevated that number. Today, we're down um, to about 4,600 uh, um, overall for, in support of uh, Hurricane Helene. Um, there is tremendous support that's coming from uh, Title X forces uh, uh, in North Carolina. Uh, I think that number today is, is around 1,400, um, uh, but would refer you back to our public affairs team uh, for that exact number in North Carolina, but I think it's probably about 1,400. Um, I don't um, uh, know when those numbers uh, will go down because that's a, a daily assessment based on uh, the requirements and forecasted requirements. Uh, but uh, under the uh, command and control of the dual status commander, Brigadier General Morrison in North Carolina, um, those operations uh, are providing uh, a tremendous amount of, uh, of response and recovery assistance. Um, there's over 50 aircraft uh, that are flying missions to date. They've flown over 8 million pounds of commodities uh, into the hard hit areas, um, you know, close to 1,700 hours flown uh, in those aircraft. Uh, and that, you know, that does, you know, a lot of debris clearing miles and miles of uh, open uh, passages now that uh, that were blocked or impeded uh, are now open. Um, and so just tremendous work continues there. Um, I'll change this to Colonel Heidelberg for the exact numbers that they have. But uh, uh, I think, uh, in fact, when I do that now, Colonel Heidelberg. Thank you, General. So I'll, I'll kind of do the same. And thank you, ma'am, for the question. For Hurricane Helene, about uh, 17 days ago, we ended up mobilizing just over 4,000 soldiers and airmen across the state to respond to that hit that hit our big bend. The response went very well. We fortunately didn't need any external assistance uh, from either our National Guard partners or Title 10 during that response. While that response was going on, obviously, we, uh, we sent two helicopters, two CH-47s to help North Carolina, and then a engineer platoon to help South Carolina. And then unfortunately, as we started to ramp up for Hurricane Milton, we pulled those resources back. We ended up mobilizing over 6,000 Florida National Guardsmen and then getting support from 19 different states that are either come in or are in route coming in uh, throughout this weekend to help us in the response for Hurricane Milton. So as I said, over 6,500 soldiers uh, now, we expect that number to jump to about 7,500, maybe 8,000. We'll uh, still can doing uh, search and rescue where we rescued over 250 civilians. We've had over 31 aircraft, again, from multiple states supporting us, over 500 high-wheeled vehicles. We've got about 30 points of distribution that we're operating throughout the areas of impact today. And we'll continue to shift our forces and really get engineer forces in there and start working on debris and then continue our, our humanitarian assistance with the pods probably for the next week or so. And then you'll see a rapid reduction as the power comes back on and the counties really become self-reliant again. But uh, we have no further unmet needs and the Title X has been at our side 
uh, with their team uh, here in Florida since we invited them down and offering help and the assistance has been there. But fortunately, with the storm taking a little bit of a shift to the south and not being that category five that we all feared, we didn't need that external support from Title 10. Hopefully that answered your question, ma'am. And just, uh, I'm just gonna uh, dovetail on the back end of that. Um, so he covered the the unmet, no unmet needs currently in Florida. Um, in, in North Carolina, in uh, Tennessee, uh, South Carolina, um, those activities um, will continue. Uh, if there is any change, then uh, we've got great communications across all of our Title 10 partners, but right now do not anticipate uh, any additional requirements for Title 10. Um, and ma'am, I, I, I don't wanna miss the opportunity. The National Guard in Title 10, while I'm incredibly proud of the response uh, and the support that we've been able to provide, we're just a really small part of this relief effort. There are st you know, state emergency managers and, and, and people from, from all walks across this response effort um, that are really doing uh, the lion's share of, uh, of the response and recovery efforts. We're one tool in the toolbox. Thank you, Lita. Um, we have Louie from ABC News. Hi, good afternoon. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, I, when it, um, I have a question about Title 10 and the timing for Helene response. Um, there's been some uh, consternation that maybe the Title 10 active duty troops did not deploy quickly enough. Can you give us kind of a timeline um, for how the request for Title 10 was initiated this time around? Was it through FEMA directly? Um, did it originate in the State House in, in North Carolina? Um, and when was it approved? And were there were assignments available for them once the Secretary of Defense approved or authorized their use in North Carolina? In other words, was there a tasking ready for them or do they have to wait for taskings to take place? Thank you. Yeah, Louisa, um, so <clears throat> so what, what I witnessed was uh, in the days prior to Helene making landfall, um, was 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 really great communication between uh, Title 32, Title 10. Um, uh, I'm sorry, our state, uh, our state uh, Joint Force headquarters, up to the National Guard Bureau level, and then uh, out to our DoD partners uh, in anticipation for landfall. Um, there were no unmet needs or forecasted unmet needs as uh, the uh, as the storm approached. Um, and after it makes landfall, it takes time to, to get out and do those uh, wide area assessments and, and get a much better understanding of uh, the roads and networks that are trafficable where, the, uh, where it's safe to do so. Um, you know, North Carolina's got some unique challenges over Florida in that it's very mountainous um, and, and some of that effort takes a lot longer as a result of that. Um, but I, I thought that the, uh, the timing and the response and the understanding of the environment uh, and where um, assistance was needed, um, I thought that was very timely. And, and where uh, the National Guard could safely get in and continue that assessment both by air and ground, um, I, I witnessed uh, a very deliberate uh, approach to that uh, and a very deliberate response. Um, as we... Um, got to where we could focus on those hard hit areas up in those communities around Asheville and the ability to bring in other partners to, uh, to assist with that response. Uh, Title 10 was there uh, immediately, but, but that's not when they started. They were there from the, from the beginning uh, in that communication, trying to anticipate uh, what those requirements were. The exact timing of where those mission assignments and requests and how they flew flowed from FEMA uh, to DOD and approval uh, at those senior um, senior levels. Uh, sir, I, I won't be able to speak to that uh, as that's really not my focus area. Over. Thank you, I understand. And uh, can you tell us um, what are some of the capabilities that those additional 500, I know we haven't reached up to that number yet, but those additional 500, they kept talking about capabilities in terms of communications and I mean, was it drones? Uh, what 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 capability was it that was, I never really got a good specificity about? So, um, so that number, I think you're right. I think that number uh, in the beginning was about 500. I know 
uh, through coordination with 18th Airborne Corps, uh, that number rose to uh, over 1,000. Um, and like I said earlier, I think that number is somewhere around 1,400 today. Uh, but those were general purpose forces um, that could be used um, uh, on the ground to assist with um, the distribution of commodities, um, fantastic support and helping for uh, with debris uh, removal and clearance of those routes. Um, and then from an aviation perspective, uh, they provided um, uh, you know, a significant number of aircraft. There's over 50 aircraft today uh, in uh, North Carolina that, that are operating. Uh, but to continue with that wide area uh, search and rescue, and then just the, the wide area uh, uh, assessment of, uh, of, of roads and, and routes and, and uh, additionally looking for communities um, or maybe just individual houses or group of houses uh, in the mountains that uh, that still have people that um, are in need of support. Um, so really deliberate, dynamic response um, and uh, has, 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 has improved and made everything better. Thank you, Louise. Thank um, you. We're, we're going to go with uh, Corey from Stars and Stripes. Try again. <laughs> Corey from Stars and Stripes. Okay, nothing heard. Um, if, if you hop on later, uh, I'll circle back. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go to uh, Ellie Watson from CBS. Hi, um, thanks for doing this. I think uh, earlier this week, the North Carolina National Guard grounded one of the their crews after video surfaced of the rotor wake um, kind of blowing away supplies that were needed. The Guard seemed to blame the confusion between the different units, lack of communication. Um, do you have any more insight on that? incident and then have there been any other incidents that there weren't videos of that you know of um uh, but that kind of show some confusion between the all the influx of support well first of all i have i've i've not seen that video but i i am very aware of uh of that situation um and and no i'm not aware of any other instances where that's happened um with regard to the response for Hurricane Helene. Um, however, um, I've been in the National Guard for over 25 years. I've been part of numerous response efforts, um, whether they're storms or fires or floods, um, and bringing helicopters into communities and supporting uh, local emergency managers um, uh, is, is, is sometimes um, very tricky and, uh, and to to, to use your term, I, I think there is some confusion in that not everybody knows, um, you know, the impact of bringing a large military helicopter into a parking lot where from the ground, it seems like there's plenty of space. Um, but from the air coming in, you've got to clear uh, all of the obstacles. You've got to look for loose debris. There's, there's a lot of things that happen as you bring a helicopter in uh, for the first time in an area that, uh, that you haven't landed before. And so, um, I, I think that it probably is easy to um, to characterize that as a as a confusing environment, but it's it's really I think a lot of people trying to do the right thing um, in a in sometimes a small space uh, with uh, obstacles that uh, they don't know become uh, flying debris uh, as an as a helicopter gets closer and closer to the ground. Thank you, Ellie. Did you have a follow on? Nope, that was good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carla with VOA. Hey, thanks for doing this. Um, I just wanted to follow up on something you had mentioned about search and rescue. Is search and rescue still ongoing in NC at this time? Uh, you've given us the numbers. I think in Florida, it was more than 250 civilians rescued. What's that number in North Carolina? And then just to follow up on Louie's question, do we have the specific date where the uh, NC National Guard started arriving in Western NC, even if you don't have the complete timeline, I'm, I'm a little confused on when they actually arrived. Thanks. Um, Ma'am, just to, just to clarify, uh, Carla, please, the, um, 
the question about arrival in Western North Carolina, was that uh, for National Guard or was that Title 10? I, I, it was difficult to hear you. Yes, for National Guard. National Guard, okay. Um, okay, so search and rescue um, is an activity that that continues um, and it, it's ongoing. Uh, it can be, you know, two or three uh, days to several weeks. And in this case, uh, based on the the amount of damage in the area that it occurred in North Carolina, it's very difficult uh, to to get um, uh, to get a, a really good assessment of that. So I suspect it will continue uh, until the ground routes are completely open um, and uh, and you can get to some of these hard to reach areas uh, by ground. Um, so uh, the exact number of rescues I know. Um, is, is well over 300, um, many hoist rescues. Uh, they'll continue to do those operations. Um, I think it's uh, 12 to 1400 people that were moved from uh, areas uh, of rising water to uh, locations that were safer. Um, I don't believe that, uh, that, you know, those numbers will go down over time. And, uh, and those numbers are in fact on their way down, uh, but I, I am not able to give you a clear uh, estimate on when I think those activities would stop. Uh, in North Carolina, um, and then I'll transition to Colonel Heidelberg to talk uh, uh, the recovery piece there. Um, so the North Carolina Guard, uh, much like uh, Florida did uh, for Hurricane Milton, um, they've got a great relationship with their emergency managers. Um, they know typically what type of resources will be needed uh, as soon as a storm passes, uh, search and rescue, and use of military helicopters is a very common piece of that uh, to include ground search and rescue, high water vehicles, uh, and boat crews. So that's, you know, those are always um, pre-scripted missions um, so that as soon as it's safe, once the storm passes, uh, those uh, those efforts will begin immediately. So uh, I know that that, that happened um, beginning on the 26th and the early hours of the 27th. As soon as the weather um, allowed uh, for aviation operations, they started launching aircraft. Uh, but you know they would launch the ground pieces uh, and then move as far as they could uh, until road conditions prevented it. And now I'll go to uh, Colonel Heidelberg for for Hurricane Milton, please. Hey, thank you, General. Our search and rescue started actually Wednesday night when the tornadoes touched down in southwest, or excuse me, southeast Florida. And uh, we did a couple, about 30 rescues there, unfortunately, from those tornadoes, very devastating in two counties. And then went into early Thursday morning, as soon as the storm force winds died down, we were able to deploy around two o'clock in the morning. Uh, we've been continuing search and rescue, but really Florida's portion of that search and rescue has really transitioned to the civilians. And now we're staging for any rivers that might crest and search and rescue that might come with that mission. Uh, but it was a whole of government approach with the search and rescue, you know, in Florida, you're either in hurricane season or preparing for it. So we work with them. We had the Coast Guard, we had the National Guard, we had Fish and Wildlife, we had active duty uh, under FEMA uh, supporting search and rescue. And I think overall uh, by about uh, one o'clock today, we're at about 330 rescues. That number will drastically stop rising uh, based on, you know, as we've gotten into all the barrier islands and those kind of things. And now we'll just wait for these rivers to crest and then kind of repeat the process in some localized areas. I hopefully I answered your question though, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Hey, Carla, I want to circle back to North Carolina real quick. That was over 755 rescues wow. uh, in North Carolina and 219 of those uh, were done by hoist. Um, so Impressive. just to correct those numbers, please. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Um, Rebecca from Associated Press. Hi, thank you so much for having this. Uh, I was wondering, if, and forgive me if this is an elemental question. I don't usually, I usually cover DHS, not DOD, but um, can you clarify when either the National Guard um, or Title 10 troops are called up to assist with a natural or with a disaster like this, who pays for that? Does that come out of DOD budget or FEMA budget to disaster relief fund or some other type of funding? Yes, ma'am. So um, in a state active duty response, um, which you've you've witnessed in both of these, um, the the states will um, 
will cover all of those costs uh, for the use of their National Guard uh, within their state. And then based on the emergency management assistant compact um, uh, between the states, uh, of which National Guard uh, is often part uh, included in that, um, the uh, supported state will cover the costs of, of those resources that come in to provide assistance. Um, in the case of uh, DOD response to FEMA, um, there's there's different variations of how that will uh, how that will be paid or whether or not it's reimbursable. Um, but I'm sure that uh, FEMA could probably take that question on better better than I. Got it. Okay, thank you. And, and if I could just follow up with one question for Colonel Heidelberg, yes, you had mentioned that you know in Florida you're either in hurricane season or you're preparing for it. I'm wondering if you could just kind of talk a little bit about like having these repeated hurricanes, you know, you had Idalia, you had Ian before that, and then you had two major ones this year. Like what kind of a stress or difficulty does that put on your guard? Yes, sir. and it's a great question. And, and honestly, it does put a strain on us. But I'll also kind of counter that and say that the soldiers and the airmen, when they're out and they're responding and they're dealing with our citizens on what unfortunately is typically their worst day, that really motivates them and reminds them why they wear the uniform. So we talk about our op tempo and how it's a strain on our soldiers and our airmen, and, and it really takes a toll. But when they're out there helping our citizens, it kind of recharges that batter and they understand and they appreciate why they're wearing the uniform. So it doesn't hurt as much as you would think it does. Obviously, it disrupts everybody's family. It disrupts everybody's uh, you know, work. Our, our, our employers in Florida have to be very understanding. Our, our colleges and our school systems have to be very understanding. So Florida in whole has to look at it and, and approach it from a different perspective when you've got this many storms. Uh, but the guardsmen take it very well. But, you know, it we're, we're tired. I'm not going to lie. We're, we're worn down and we would like a break. But uh, as far as being able to respond and staying in, they, uh, they're motivated by, by what they get to do. And, and the leadership from the state really allows us that opportunity. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, it sounds like Corey from Stars and Stripes is on. Um, you're on the phone, right, Corey? I'm just going to give him another second. <laughs> Corey, are you on? Okay. Okay, well, we'll move on. <laughs> I have Ellen from Synopsis. Hi, thank y'all for doing this. Um, could you tell me if you've brought in any healthcare resources, if any of your you know, medical personnel have come in to set up hospitals or support local hospitals? Uh, Ma'am, that is, uh, I'll, I'll start with that and then I'll, I'll pass over to Colonel um, Heidelberg for the specifics uh, within Florida. But um, that is certainly uh, something that is assessed um, within each of the state emergency management uh, operations centers, uh, along with other emergency support functions within the state. Um, there were uh, uh, in anticipation that there would be additional uh, nurses or healthcare uh, professionals. Um, we do look across the guard, and that was a capacity that uh, we were building in support of Hurricane Helene um, in North Carolina. But uh, but the state of North Carolina was able to uh, mitigate that risk uh, with other resources. So in this case, uh, we did not employ them. Yes, ma'am. For uh, Florida's perspective, we had several hospitals, I think over 22 in the impacted area just from this last storm on the uh, West Coast that had to evacuate or move certain patients out of them. Uh, fortunately, they didn't need any assistance from the Florida National Guard and our medical providers. We had them. They deploy and mobilize in our mobile defense into the impacted area pre-storm, so they're ready to immediately respond. And we did get help. We had our, our pararescue me uh, medical personnel, and then we had uh, 24 from New York as well that joined the SAR teams uh, that went out. So our medical providers and professionals were involved, but we weren't involved directly with any hospitals or supporting any hospitals. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ellen. Uh, Matt with ABC News. Hi, no question. 
right. Thank you, Matt. Uh, so I know Corey is on. I'm getting a note that she is on, but it's a uh, technical issues. So I'll just give it one more shot <laughs> just in case uh, she's able to make this happen. Okay. All right. Sorry, Corey. I know she can hear us, but she's having some audio problems. Um, I'll just go around the room one more time. Are there any other questions from uh, reporters? All right. Well, thank you everyone for, uh, I'm sorry. Well, thank you for joining us today um, and uh, for taking the time to, uh, you know, let us share our words with you. And if you have any follow-on questions, uh, please reach out to the National uh, Guard Bureau of Public Affairs and we'll be happy uh, to assist. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.